Representative Gear Green, you recognize to present your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, there was a third amendment that has been has, has changed the bill that you have in front of you, and I'd like to call your attention to that. This was uh, considered and voted on in members on in the House, and it was on page two, it was delete the line services with a contractor who should, who should know that a contractor. So we took the phrase out, should know. I know a couple of the members have a problem with that, and I felt like that was something that we could mend out and still keep the intent of the bill. Other than that, I, I'll take any questions if any might have. Okay, I have uh, Representative Burris here for a motion. Uh, do we have any questions with the committee? Uh, Representative Hart. Uh, Mr. Uh, Representative Green, good morning. Uh, <coughs> refresh my, my memory because I'm still having uh, a, a little problem why we have singled out one group of, <coughs> of contractors and not uh, made this a statewide. Uh, I don't, I do not Party disagree there. with uh, okay, limited illegal. Out. Illegal is illegal, but refresh my memory why we are just limited to state and we have not gotten a bigger push from some other entities that would push for us statewide ban. Representative Hardy, the reason, and I had no push to bring this bill, there was no one that encouraged me to run this bill. It was a bill that I had seen that had passed uh, in a couple states, and I read it and, and pondered over it. So that's how the bill originated. But as to your question, the reason that I have brought the bill in this form is because the monies involved in these state contracts are state taxpayer dollars versus in the private sector they're not taxpayer dollars and as a state representative I am charged with overseeing the accountability of state tax dollars mm -hmm. so that would be my reason for, for the running the bill as is. Have you been encouraged to, uh, to move statewide with this because I'm uh, always saying that Illegal is all right with state dollars, taxpayer dollars, but illegal uh, is okay with private dollars. I'm not saying it's all right in any case. I'm just saying that as a representative and considering my duty to watch over the state tax dollars, that this is all that I consider in my bill. Okay, have you? Uh, have you I have, yes, I have had people that have commented they'd like to see it far reaching, but they've not actually encouraged me to expand upon this bill. No. Thank you. Just point out that the bills could be drafted to do as what Representative Hardy is saying. So uh, we have Representative Flowers, Representative Pace, Representative Gaskell on the list. Uh, Representative Flowers, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Gray. I thought about the uh, the window of 60 days for a contractor to remedy this violation that's applied uh, in your bill. Um, and I'm wondering, the 60 days of opportunity to uh, address a problem that has already been recognized as uh, illegal. Wouldn't it be a duty on the part of the state once the state has knowledge that a person is here illegally to then call the Immigration and Naturalization Service and have that person immediately deported? Would we, and, and, and I guess the uh, underlying question to that is, would we be then as a state engaging in something that would circumvent federal law? I think you asked two questions. Is that yes. I don't think that this bill requires the state to take any other action other than the action is whether or not they feel like their contract has been uh, violated, just like any other contract. Uh, I've certainly other legislation possibly could look at it. I, I don't think the state is being asked here in this bill, Representative Flowers, 
to any way, anywhere try to imitate federal jurisdiction. I think what we're asking is language of the contract, whether or not it has been accepted or violated. This is a contract <laughs> bill, in my opinion. And, it, and certainly the language that we're offering here is similar to federal law, but there's no penalty there, uh, no fine, no jail time or anything. As far as, you know, the state notifying the federal government, uh, I would have no problem with them doing that, but I don't know there's anything that requires them to do that. Well, you, you know, the, your bill um, already acknowledges the status of the immigrant being illegal. And uh, they are the ones that are targeted here. And I'm simply asking you, would not that impose uh, some type of burden on the state or some duty on the part of the state to immediately uh, seek for some deportation or at least some contact with INS? I mean, why would we be giving and wouldn't we be extending federal law by, uh, or trying to extend federal law by allowing the contract for 60 days? I don't think that it puts any onus on the state to have to, to, have to report anything to anyone. Would you agree that we would be extending federal law? To, no, ma'am. You don't? No, I do not. So the 60 days, that's okay? 60 up. days allows an employer or a contractor to come in compliance with the state contract. But it's something that's already been made illegal by our federal law. Illegal immigration, are you talking about? Yes. Yes, that's, that's illegal federal law. Okay. Mr. Uh, Representative Green, I've also had an opportunity to look at um, a news article that uh, I shared with you, and I'd like your, your uh, response to what, what you uh, is anything that you gleaned from the article about um, jurisdictions around the country, local as well as other states, that may have been trying to impose ordinances to prohibit uh, illegal immigrants from maybe renting from uh, landlords or uh, working in certain uh, areas? Uh, do you have any sense that? Uh, this is a federal issue and should be treated as a federal issue and then no. because of that given to our Congress no, to deal I believe with. this is a state contract issue. So these other communities around the country that have imposed these ordinances and have ended up in federal court and the federal court says uh, they cannot uphold these laws, that has That's no true. bearing on, on your Representative mm -hmm. Flowers, you know, I'd have to look at those individual cases and what those cities try to do uh, in order, and I don't know that I can give an opinion on that. All I can tell you is the state of Arkansas has within its power to list in its contract with prospective contractors any requirements that it wants to regarding the use of state tax dollars. I believe that's a state power that we are we're able to do, and I think that's something that we, we show accountability to our people in doing so. Well, would you agree that if we're going to be sitting up here creating uh, legislation that's going to result in us uh, having to pay legal fees in federal court to uh, defend the statute that uh, by all appearances and uh, suggestions and precedents around the country is going not to be upheld, that this would be a waste and a burden on the state even more so that what you're trying to alleviate here Representative Flowers, I, you know, two states have already adopted this. Uh, I know of no problems in those two states. I mean, the state of Colorado, the state of Pennsylvania, and uh, and and I don't mean to be trite in what I say to you, but that's a hypothetical what if. Uh, and at this point, what I'm trying to do is deliver a message to the taxpayers of this state that we are going to be accountable for the tax dollars within the law. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back. I overlooked Representative Ragland, so I've got Ragland and then Pace and then Gaskell. 